so this video is going to be five Georgian book reviews. I've been wanting to do a video like this for a while where I take a certain era of history and I recommend some books to you based on that era for beginners all the way through to kind of specific sort of books on certain aspects of that era. All of these books, I uh, was a little bit cheeky and I requested them from the publisher and the publisher sent them to me, which is Pen and Sword, so it's very kind of them, thank you very much. And yes, let's just get going. I've got five to recommend to you, starting with books for beginners. And as usual, all the books will be linked down in the description bar below, so if you want to go and get your hands on them, they are there. So, the first book that I'm going to recommend to you is Life in the Georgian Court by Catherine Kuzo. I have no idea how to pronounce it, I'm so sorry. Um, this book is brilliant for beginners because it looks at the Georgian court throughout Europe. So we have four different areas, it's kind of four main chapters if you will. So a chapter on like birth, a chapter on marriage, scandal and death. And then within those kind of section chapter things we have certain people from history so it'll be talking about George III and his marriage um, we'll talk about someone from France we'll talk about someone from England you, you get the gist um, all throughout Europe and the Georgian period I think this book is great for beginners in the Georgian period because sometimes you think oh I really I'm really interested in the Georgians and then you read about certain areas and you think oh I might have liked this but actually I'm really interested in this this book you can read in one sitting that's how I read it or a great way to do it is to come back to it and read little snippets of it um, you can have it as like a bit of a bedside book and just read about a person a night if you wanted to. That's a quite an, an interesting way of doing it. I found this book quite helpful because I occasionally get stuck in a rut with history sometimes and I do read about the same stuff and try and research the same things over and over again. And a book like this was actually quite refreshing because although it didn't really teach me anything on the British side of it, I was really intrigued with the French side of it and I really wanted to learn more, which I'll come to in a minute. Um, so yes, if you're like me and you know quite a lot about a certain court but you don't know about others and you like to like, dip your toe in the water, so to speak, this is a good one to go to. Or if you're a complete beginner and you don't know which aspect of Georgian court you'd like, this is a good one to go to, to find out which kind of country takes your fancy. So the next book is also by the same author and it's Kings of Georgian Britain. This is a kind of small-ish, I think it's around 200 pages, um, book on the Kings of Georgian Britain. So we have George I, II, III and IV, also known as Prince Regent. The Georgians, Georgian Britain, was really interesting in terms of their monarchy and their relationships. So we had husbands not getting on with wives, fathers not getting on with sons, fathers are doted devoted to daughters, um, kings with mistresses, kings without mistresses, they're so different and it, it was, it's all, it's so like a soap drama but obviously very real, it's brilliant, it's so good to learn about the story and if you don't know about the story of um, the Georgians and you'd like to know the story of the kings of Georgian Britain this is a good one to go to because it's all the basic facts, I mean for instance if you've watched my video my book review on The Strangest Family by Jairus Hadley and you think, oh I really want to read that but I feel like I don't know too much and you want to kind of test the water so to speak before to make sure that you truly are going to love that book, this is a great one to go to. This is a great one if you're a beginner about the Georges. I'd say if you're not a beginner then probably don't go to this one but if you are then this is a great one because it gives you all the vital information without any of the guff, it's just all the stuff that you really need to know in a simple um, concise writing style. So the next book that I'm going to recommend to you is What Regency Women Did For Us by Rachel Knowles. A woman of the Regency period had little rights, little education, and was seen as the second sex, inferior to men. However, that was a funny however, however, there were certain women that did break the mould, and that's what this book is for. So this book has 12 chapters on 12 different women, so each, each chapter is on a specific woman of the Regency period, and how she was different, how she broke the mould, what she achieved and what legacy she leaves. So there is a chapter on women that you could expect like Jane Austen, there's a chapter on Marie Tussaud or otherwise known as Madame Tussaud, uh, a chapter on Elizabeth Fry and so on. 
I think a great way to read this book, although I read it in one sitting, a great way to read it would be like a woman a night sort of thing. That sounds weird. But <laughs> read about a specific woman a night. If you're one of these people that likes not necessarily to learn about um, women as a whole, but just certain individuals in a certain period, this is a good one to go to. Um, yeah, it's really interesting and I think some of you might really enjoy it. Now, do you remember earlier when I said that when I read Life in the Georgian Court, I became really interested in the idea of learning about French history. Ta-da! <laughs> this is Mary Antoinette's Confidant by Jerry Walton, The Rise and Fall of Princess de Lamballe. I am definitely pronouncing that incorrectly. <laughs> this book is a biography of Princess de Lamballe, but it coincides, of course, with Mary Antoinette because she was at court with her, she was her confidant. This book is what you'd expect, a typical biography of a Georgian lady. It talks about her birth, her life and her death, you know, all those things in between. But this book was so interesting for me because I knew nothing of the period and the writing was very clear, very concise, I understood everything which is marvellous and it's honestly a little bit harrowing this book because it talks about the Georgians and what you'd expect, this kind of glitzy, glamorous life, especially in the French court. I mean, French dress in the Georgian period was absolutely divine, was not was it not? It's gorgeous. And the, the kind of parties and that atmosphere. But then also there's this very serious, very sensitive uh, topic of the French Revolution and this very darkness that's kind of the glitz and glamours like on the top there's like the icing but underneath it's a very dark kind of mood and very dark vibe and the French Revolution of course was very harrowing and this book takes it very seriously and it's it was really interesting to, to feel that mix. Um, from this book now I'm going to go and learn more about uh, the French Georgian court and I really want to learn more about the French Revolution because honestly I was shocked. I'm not going to say anything about the ending but I was like <gasps> um, yeah I'm not going to say any more because I'll spoil it but if you're interested in biographies of women of the Georgian period then this is a great one to go to. Don't be put off and you think oh I'm really interested in British history I don't think I'd be interested in French. Just try it because I honestly I really enjoyed it so yes great. And then finally, last but not least, I have In Bed with the Georgians, Set Scandal and Satire in the 18th Century by Mike Rendell. I loved this book so much. This was so interesting and it covers such a wide range of topics to do with sexuality in Georgian England. So if they open up to the contents pages, we have chapter one is on the sex workers. Lovely. And sex workers looks at certain categories of women of this period, um, ranging from kind of worst to like least, you know, bad in terms of like prostitution. So number one, women of fashion who intrigued. This classification covers bored wives, perhaps married into the aristocracy, who felt sufficiently liberated to have multiple affairs simply because they wanted love and sex and could not find it within marriage. As they did not sell sex, they cannot really be classified as prostitutes. And it goes all the way down to talking about number 10, which is bulkmongers, homeless beggars, living rough and often in the final stages of disease. Smashing. So there's a chapter on that. There's chapter, um, chapter two is actually really interesting. And it's the alphabet of sex and more besides. And it's basically like a dictionary. You know how we've got like urban dictionary? It's a bit like that, but a Georgian sex style one. That was really fun to read. Um, there's chapters on brothels, mall houses. There's a chapter on the aristocracy, chapter on art, um, crime, the romantics. My favorite chapter was chapter four, which is courtesans and harlots. So this book was brilliant. It was amazing. It reminded me of a really brilliant lecture at university. At university I actually did two lectures on the history of sexuality. One was a history module, one was a sociology module and I remember we had this set text for one of those, I can't remember which one it was, but it was a set text which I still have that book with me now actually and we had to read certain chapters and I ended up reading the whole thing. I was always thinking I'm never going to find a book as good or better than that. Enter this one. 
ta-da. I love the writing style. I love how it worked with the pictures. So we've got pictures all kind of grouped together and then throughout the text it'd say, see picture one, see picture two, blah, 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 as it's explaining things. It was really good, really clear, really concise. I felt like I wanted a DVD attached to the back of this so I could listen and watch Mike Rendell actually giving this lecture. I am now going to go and find more books on him that he has done because honestly, it was brilliant. I know that this is definitely not gonna be to everyone's cup of tea because not everyone is interested in the history of sexuality. But I have to say, if you are at all interested in the history of sexuality of the Georgian period, oh, go read this, because you will not be disappointed. This was just marvelous. So there we are. Those are five books on the Georgian period that I can recommend to you. I know that some are gonna be more to your taste than others, but let me know in the comment section down below if any of these have taken your fancy and if you're going to add any to your wish list or you're going to get your hands on any. As I said before, they will be linked in the description bar below. So you can just click on it and it'll take you straight to the book depository. So take care everybody and I shall see you soon for the next video. Bye for now.